I noticed I didn't introduce you, so I'll just introduce you now. And you can <laughs> I was, I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I should just start again. morning and welcome to the hobby breakfast show kicking off your morning with hobby chat um this week's episode we're doing something a bit different you're joined by myself the mayor and ot hi everybody nice one um and yes Olan's not here this week um so boo uh, but who likes him anyway um so um uh, it's a bit more of an analysis video, I suppose. Um, so stick <laughs> no, around. Analysis. Find out how we're... <laughs> analysis, yeah, in inverted commas. Stick around to find out how we're fixing the Dragon Emperor. So, Hobby... Oh, uh, why did we give we... Mare this responsibility? What? <laughs> what have we done this week? I painted some goblin mercenaries, which you can see on the screen. To which the... she may or may not have taken to a tournament. <laughs> yes. Uh, I painted them to the lowest possible standard that I could get away with, which was oh, spray painting them white and then putting a skin wash on them and then block colouring the metal, the bone and the uh, uh, leather and then putting a black wash over the metal and the leather and a sepia wash over the bone. And that was it. That's all I did. Uh, and the bases were pretty simple. Um, so they, they were a nightmare to put together. Um, this is a nightmare. I'm having uh, a nightmare right you're now. You're a nightmare. <laughs> what did you two do? Oh, I, I'm here by the way, if you are. Hello. Yeah. It's beyond it's a strange here. alternate reality. Yeah, I, I'm... <laughs> I am aware that, the news and hobby, uh, yeah, I'm aware that like literally a minute ago, Mayor said that I wasn't going to be in this episode. But here I am. Was a, but that was a lie. That was a lie. <laughs> but, yeah, I've been hanging around. Surprise. So, yeah, surprise. Emerge from the cupboard to talk about his hobby and he'll go back in there in a second. Have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will soon retreat when the Dragon Emperor <laughs> the main topic of the discussion. With all those circles. Yeah. Mm. All those circles, Jesus Christ! <laughs> those um, tasty circles. I, I painted some bows and badges this week. Oh, oh yeah! I, I you painted... also bought some, which you <laughs> said you weren't going to. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 flip we'll over that fact. Um, I painted a uh, a weasel. Look at this! Wow, and it's got a blunderbuss, which is phenomenal. Which you can uh, see circled with a red circle here. Thank you for adding that edit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, blue circle, no doubt. Probably. <laughs> this is my um, uh, street gang war bands. I'm putting it. Red, Red Wings are useless. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, approach for its height. So, um, yeah, so uh, I painted up him. Um, I then, as Mayor said, bought a new war band <laughs> and painted them in like four days. Fortunately, <laughs> I've grown um, uh, so efficient in posting that I could. I could paint them in the same weeks that they were bought and then yeah. get them done for this. So before, that the shame, before the shame kicked in. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, it's a little little um, shrew night war band, including the shrew on stag beetle, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't know if um, OT is edited in just the group shot or whether they're all each individually going to be done, but they each have their own individual heraldry, mm. uh, including some little free handing I did on the one with the shield that has a goblet on, which I was fairly happy with the free handing there, that little mm. goblet on his heraldry. Nice. You can see that oh. highlighted with a red circle here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, weirdly, these will have already appeared on the channel by the time this goes out, because yep. time doesn't work properly. In... It's, it's it's not a linear concept. It really is it Inception? No, no. Uh, um, that's Tenet. Tenet. Tenet, Tenet, Tenet still there we go. makes you just want to like crawl up into a ball and cry. Uh, and then lastly, I um, painted another... Burrows and Badgers. Um, I had a real Burrows and Badgers. You thing. have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just. You had tournament game. FOMO, that's what it was. Yeah. You did all this on a Saturday and made a bat rep because we were at a tournament. 
Well, I, spoilers. Oh no, it's already gone out, hasn't it? Lol. I made yeah. I made the, I made the batter that day. I didn't do any of the painting that day. These got painted well in advance, but um, or any of the other work you said you had to do. No, I did depressingly do all that work. <laughs> oh, sad times. So, so making a bat rep was um, like my my treat after. <laughs> wow. But um, mm. look, it's a lovely little hedgehog night. He's going to go into my other nightly war band, the one led by the Doge. Mm. Reminds me of Sebastian. Yes, it does a little bit. Maybe we should make this the official Sebastian um, oh, image. The, the, fe- the official hobby breakfast war band for Burrows and Badges. Yeah. I'm Red Wing. <laughs> <laughs> You're Red Wing. Mare, <laughs> Mare can be one of the fucking OP fucking spellcasters. Yeah. You um, could be fists, but yeah. we aren't revealing those allegations yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. This is the issue of seeding editing rights, is that. <laughs> That wouldn't be removed, but now that's definitely being left in. So, uh, brilliant. This? We'd love yeah, to loads of red circles everywhere. <laughs> oh, thank you. God. Right, you, you're all going to have to say goodbye. To, oh, oh, no, we, we've got to do OT's hobby now. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say. We've got to uh, listen to this schmuck for a bit. <laughs> what did you do? I've painted some red lights. Of course you fucking have. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, um, yeah, also, it's really worth talking about. I also Aww. did uh, did Glorfindel, who I've been putting off for like three months. Um, and did I do anything else? Um, no, I don't think I did anything else. I painted up a couple of um, shitty dismounts because I wanted to make them slightly less terrible. But um, yeah, it was just four nights and Glorfindel. I'm really happy with Glorfindel. I think he's actually the best model I've painted. Um, like the foot version was way better than the mounted version. I think I made. I wasn't really happy with the horse on the mounted version because I primed in white, and it's a white horse, and it was just like I don't really know what to do with that. Um, so I ended up doing a bit of like grey to try and give it some shadow, but I think it just looked a bit crap. Um, but yeah, really happy with the foot version. But ho- horses are just shit to paint. They're so unrewarding. Yeah, they're boring shit. Use quite um, a lot of paint. They take, yeah, they take a while. They don't have enough detail on them to make it easy yeah. to pick out. So you have to be actually yeah. really highlighting. It's just like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was me. And it's basically what I've, the same thing I've been doing for the last like six months. So not particularly. Are you, are you with nice now? I am. I've painted all three boxes. Um, and oh. I know I've, I've, <laughs> I've now got like. I think I've got like 900 points um, of R- Rivendell now, if I need it. Um, Million I th- of Rivendell. Yeah, I think my um, my next thing, might I might try and do like a Gilgalad horse conversion, because I've never really done a conversion before, and that might be mm-hmm. a quite a cool model to add. But um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Bit of a pause, because cool. I need to do my Thraws and my Dale um, before then. Try and reduce the yes. old pil- pilo shame. And you know, no models till April, so that's, that's yeah. That's right, you got a whole month to go. <laughs> that's what we're sticking to. I think that's right. beautiful. Now you've only got yeah. one month. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go cold turkey, and then just spend like 150 quid in two days. Oh yeah, my! And all of it. I mean, for nothing. <laughs> Shit, like a far Harrod army or something. Yeah. Well, no, because also one of my opponent, one of my opponents at the tournament suggested adding the twins, and I was like, hmm. Mm, yeah, more, more Rivendell. More Rivendell. <laughs> tasty, tasty um, Rivendell. I've got the twins. If you want to borrow them, of course. Oh, Why do you have the twins? Because he uh, has a fellowship, yeah. fellowship ally. Fellowship mm. ally. That's a bit. Random. But the twins. I don't know. Sebastian was selling them, and I, I was like, you can't sell them. They look great, and I was like, I'll have them. Okay. Oh, Okay, well, I could always buy Sebastian's that look better than mine. And I wouldn't have to paint them. Well, he, 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 yeah, he painted them and they're still yeah. painted, but the foot models aren't, so you might have to commission those. Uh, but, um, get yeah, him to do it. never gonna put, um, lose the horse. Yeah, we're gonna put on our back in his box now. Okay. Yeah, so, off I fuck. Say goodbye, viewers. It was great. I'll be, I'll be back at the end of the episode for the news. For the news. Yeah. Right, on to the main event then. Like that right so ot why don't you tell us uh kind of the gist of the kind of categories we'll be looking at um so that we can prepare ourselves 
for, for what is to come. Um, so I think it's going to break down essentially into three main areas of discussion. Uh, there's comparing him to other profiles in the game. Uh, there's talking about why in particular he and his effects on the board are powerful. And then there's we're going to try and finish off with some potential fixes. Um, we're not saying this is exactly what should happen, but just throwing out some ideas for general discussion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, listen up, Jay. Yeah. Well, uh, um, I mean, uh, he thinks it's fine given he the recent FAQ. Fine. Given the recent yeah. FAQ. No, everything's oh, well. fine. We'll just uh, everything's we'll fine. Just everything's fine. We're just complaining unnecessarily. We in, insert meme of dog surrounded by fire here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, let's begin with uh, the comparisons then. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stats. On, yeah, there's on, a lot of stats. So, um, why don't we go through Imra Hill uh, and the other two first, and then we can look at the overall stats and compare them all. Yeah. Um, so do you want to look at the slide first, or do you want to look at the table with all the stats on first? I think let's do the slide first, because the table's... Yeah. Got a lot of information. Yeah, I think the table's more there for reference than actually to talk about. Um, so essentially, all I've done here on these slides is uh, they all have the Dragon Emperor on the left-hand side and then the three most relevant comparisons I could think of. If you can think of some others, that's absolutely fine. They're just the ones that came to mind for me. Again, I'm not saying this is a perfect fix or what should be done. I'm just saying this is the process I went through when thinking about how to fix the Dragon Emperor. So... Left-hand column is the advantages you get with the Dragon Emperor. So um, the, the, the main one that always just comes up is those three black dragons, um, the board wide stand fast. Uh, we'll talk more about the way the banner works later. Um, essentially, he has, he has a bigger banner than most just because of the size of his base. Um, and yeah, like he, he just gets lots, lots in his toolkit. Um, Imra Hill's a bit cheaper. You can take him on a horse. Um, but he, he loses out on so many things compared to the Dragon Emperor. Yeah, he, he's got one buffing ability, essentially, yeah. and it's such a small range compared to the yeah. Dragon Emperor. He can't yeah. just, like, make your guys better before the game's even started or give you free upgrades. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just for a straight comparison, because their stat lines are basically the s same I otherwise, think, aren't we, they? We talked about last week. I, I think Onod actually said they have exactly the same stat line as in yeah. fights. So, yeah. Um, and actually, we could always reference the other slide here. But yeah, I think they're exactly yeah. the same. So they have um, exactly the same stat line, except yeah. the Dragon Emperor has all these abilities. Yeah. And I'd argue that with the new um, Eastling heroes alongside the Dragon Emperor, I mean, a lot of people are going to make the argument that you've got to look at it in the context of the army. Um, yeah. But the Dragon Emperor, in the context of literally any army in the game, um, he's just going to be an auto-include. Um, yes. And that's what yes. he's become. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're taking Eastlings, you could argue, you know, at medium uh, to lower points values, you could just want to take the um, uh, Ritabian, the Wizard, whichever one it is. Rogear, or however you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because... Um, they'll do a lot for you as well. But um, yeah, I think uh, comparing these two, I mean, even the three black dragons straight away. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, you get 50 points worth of stuff. Yeah. Except he's only 30 points more expensive. So straight away, you're an advantage, let alone all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's pretty strong. And like, I don't know, I, I when we look at the fixes later, like I think there are some ways to, to tone him down. But I don't know, it's it's just that the he doesn't have any real weaknesses. Like he mm. he it, that I don't know how you can really go about targeting him down. Um I mean if we want to move on to the next one and compare him to the Golden King, this is the one that Onod raised um previously. Yeah. And like I it, it when you compare these two, like it shows how hard the power creep has come on. Like the fact it's, that the these are two essentially like buffing heroes, except that one of them like <laughs> just gets so much more in his toolkit. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, they're they're both dudes sitting on plinths, except yeah. So yeah, in this case, the Golden King's forty points cheaper instead of thirty points from a hill. He has three yeah. more will, um, but arguably that doesn't really matter too much. Um, yeah, 
He's more maneuverable thanks to smaller base. Yeah, he's barely. Yeah. Um, he's got a, a couple extra stats. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the the Dragon Emperor having more fight and defense. Yeah. Uh, uh, another might and fates. Uh, his banners ten times more area. Yeah. Uh, and like that, uh, yeah. like the Golden King, he he has resolve, which is nice, but he has no other heroics, and like. The, dra- the Dragon Emperor, I think, comes with Strike, Defense, and Resolve, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, like, I... anyway. It... <laughs> He's got a Strength as well. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it's... It is when you put them alongside, like, the sort of older heroes, as it were, the original book heroes. Like, yes, the Golden King is cheaper, but... You're getting just so much more for your points, and like the Dragon Emperor is not only a legit buffing hero; he's a legit combat hero. Like he's good against magic. Like thanks to the way shooting works against him, which I think is just completely stupid. Um, he's re- he's good against shooting. Like yeah. Anyway, Golden King's D five. It, it's it's problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Um... What is the base Easterling army bonus, by the way? Do we know? Um, plus one courage if they're broken and okay. something else that I can't remember. Once uh, the game in scenarios with the dice is rolled to see if the game ends. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So no. I, I was just out of curiosity looking at the Legendary Legion just because mm. if you're taking him, you're probably taking that because you also get what are probably the two most powerful Eastling heroes other than the Dragon Dra- 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 yeah, Dragon Emperor still in that list. Yeah. Um so it's like, well, why wouldn't you take it? Um mm-hmm. but yeah, so okay, so uh obviously, yeah, much stronger than the Golden King. Different yeah. army lists again, but yeah. um not as far away from each other as most army lists. No. Then we've got Boromir. Poor Boromir. Um, this one is brutal. So I, 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 yeah, it's it's bonkers. So Dragon Emperor's cheaper. Yeah. Uh, which is weird. Um, so Boromir's more expensive than the Dragon Emperor. With, got... So with with the with the banner with the banner. with the banner, yeah. So with with banner, Boromir is two hundred points. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's the role I'm taking him in here. If you want him as a combat hero, that's fine. But I'm thinking, I was basically thinking in terms of like broader buffing heroes who are also, you know, semi decent in combat was my logic. Yeah, I mean, having three more might is nice. Uh, yeah. He's more, more maneuverable and he does have the horn. But like yeah. you put here, the Dragon Emperor has 50 points with the Black Dragons, uh, yeah. resistant to magic, board wide, stand fast. Basic banners, four times the total area, and the other yeah. spear. I mean, that arguably, at least, if not more, than makes up for the points difference. So straight away, my head saying Dragon Emperor should be two hundred or over points. Um, yeah, based on that. But yeah, um, let's look at uh, probably one of the most interesting parts, uh, which is the circles. <laughs> right, I, I've got some explaining to do on the fucking circles. Right, okay. so. So, on the slide are the seven different types of banners that I could think of in the game. It may be there are other ones, but these are the ones I could think of. Um, basically, the green circle in the middle represents how big the normal base is. So, a 25 mil base for infantry, 40 mil for cav, and then um, the dragon emperors, which is even bigger again, I think. Um, I think he might go up to 80 mil. I'm not sure. Um, and essentially... What you've got are, and this is accurate because I did it in a piece of software, um, each of the banners, their relative radius. So, for instance, in number one is a basic infantry three-inch banner, and then next to it, number three, is an infantry with six-inch and infantry 12-inch. Um, so, number one uh, might be like your typical um, either hero or infantry model with a banner, and then number two is a calf model with a banner, and so on and so on. Um Number five and number six are the twelve-inch banners, which you might typically see on someone like Imrahil, for instance. Like I, I don't know if you know there are other twelve-inch banners in the game. Is it only Imrahil and the Dragon Emperor who are twelve-inch banners? Um, that I can think of off the, off the top of my head, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, and then what you can see further along is the Dragon Emperor's um, base. Now, it doesn't look that much bigger there, and I'll, I'll admit that it isn't a massive upgrade. Um, but because he sits on an 80 mil base, which is basically double, well, not quite. Okay, it's double the radius. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets complicated with areas and stuff. Um, it's double the radius of a typical base. Uh, it essentially, essentially, the bigger the base you have a banner on, the effective um, banner size becomes bigger. It's not a massive deal, but it is. So, for instance, a uh, three-inch cavalry banner is bigger, has a bigger area that it buffs than a three-inch infantry banner. It's not much, but it is just a little bit. Yeah, um, and it becomes the exponentially larger, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, the next slide, the one with the blue circles, which I'll put up now, is the one that explains it a bit more clearly. So, um, a basic blue um inf uh, the basic three inch infantry banner for instance covers um a buffing area of about 38 square inches so this doesn't include the model itself it includes the whole area that is available to buff from that banner okay um then the cavalry banner you can see is slightly bigger not much bigger um, only about 10 percent bigger at 43 square inches and so on and so on and so on um the Dragon Emperors um, is effectively the same size, the same area as 15 basic infantry banners. So the area the Dragon Emperor buffs is effectively 15 times larger than a basic infantry banner. And before what... people start going in the comments, uh, <laughs> we know that technically you're never going to do that. Yeah. But from a point of view of just how obscene the difference is, it's quite interesting. Yeah. And yeah, I think it it's quite surprising um like how quickly it does scale. And you're not always going to get value from that. But what it lets you do is it lets you use the banners in different ways. So when you think of a banner, at least when I think of a banner, um it will be either right in your front line or in the line immediately behind. What you can do with a six inch banner is put it maybe a few inches behind behind your battle line so that even if they even if they break through your front line you're not going to get charged and your banner won't get sniped what you can do with a 12 inch banner is you can put it so far back from your line that even if they were to break through they're not even going to be in range the following turn because if you think of a 12 inch banner that is effectively 12 bases it can be away from the model it needs to buff yeah Wow. Which is why yeah. which is why it's really hard to balance something and why I think the Dragon Emperor is a problem is because he is so tough, and I come onto this in the slides later. He is so tough and he buffs such a big area, not only with the banner, but also he gives a six inch fight bubble. Like <laughs> Yeah. Like yeah, it's it's really, it's really difficult because it's just a combination of that 12 inch banner and that base size that makes him yeah, really problematic. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't thought about the fact that, yeah, you can just have him quite far back and still have the equivalent of, you know, like a 10 inch wide line yeah. where the yeah. guy is supported, even though you're like maybe six inches behind the line. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll put the next. I'll I'll leave that slide up for a second. But moving on to the next one, um, this this is more just it's it's more to demonstrate um how you can what you can do with normal banners. Um, basically, it doesn't fit perfectly because of the way circles work. But you can effectively get pretty comfortably with a little bit of overlap eleven normal banners inside. The, uh, while the area is fifth time, fifteen times bigger, you can't actually fit the banners in that way. So you can get eleven normal banners in that Dragon Emperor circle. The one that's really interesting uh, and that really kind of blew my mind, and please correct me in the comments if my maths is wrong, but I've checked it twice and I think it does actually work, is that um, if you were to position them perfectly, um, you could fit roughly 30-ish infantry models in range of a banner. Um, now, you could probably fit a little bit more, as Onod highlighted when I put this uh, in our chat, that you could like have them touching and stuff like that. But this is models that just fit completely inside that range. So um, you could fit roughly 30-ish models inside the range of a 3-inch banner. For the Dragon Emperor, <laughs> 
you can fit 523 infantry bases inside the range of his 12-inch banner. And, so, of course, you could have more touching the edges if you wanted, but, yeah, that's how many fit inside. Oh, uh, yeah, true. You could have another row. Like Yes. Yeah. So... God. But I, 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 the, the, the program I was using couldn't model that. But yeah, essentially, this is this is what happens. You can fit around thirty and then around five hundred into the range of the Dragon Emperor. Wow. So, I mean, again, it, it's never going to come to fruition. That's... Like this isn't a strategy, <laughs> but it does show just how big that area is. Yeah. Um. I mean, it might as well be board wide, like. How often are you going to split your army up that much? Yeah, um, and something that like a board wide banner. I mean, that's just unheard of. That's just, yeah, that's yeah. just silly. Um, yeah, and it, it, but it might as well be that. Like, yeah, yeah. Because if if you're using him, even like relatively intelligently, like he's going to be so close to every fight that your model should be involved in. Yeah. And I, I think part of the problem is maybe just the way that Easterlings play because they, I mean, they don't always fit in a pipe block. I know they don't always, but like they can have a pretty strong shield wall with pikes in behind and getting banners tucked in behind those, even basic banners, like one of the one of the things that makes Amda powerful is he's a banner, but he's only a three inch banner. Whereas, you know, Dragon Emperor, <laughs> <laughs> you could sit him, just sit him back. He's not in, not in under threat of dying. And you can just be getting, if he's close enough, get that fight buff, or you're just getting those banner rerolls. And suddenly you go from, you know, two attacks in a fight to three attacks in a fight. And that's happening in such a big bubble. Yeah. It, yeah. it does mean, I, I, maybe what they were thinking was, oh, people will use pikes. So going from, you know, two or three attacks to four attacks really yeah. doesn't matter that much proportionally. Yeah. But yeah. actually, it does mean you can spread your line a lot more thinly. Get yeah. more models on enemy models, um, mm. and just make fights where you you outnumber even stronger. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, just why, just why? Yeah. Like, that we'll go into the the balance stuff in a second. Like, I think there are actually some quite neat ways to because what what I'm not proposing here is you nuke the Dragon Emperor. Like, I think it should continue to exist in roughly the form it does at the moment. I just think it is an outlier in terms of the value you're getting for your points and how consistent it's going to be. Because um, yeah. it's not like a glass cannon. Um, like It's very strong. Um, yeah, there's no real downside to it, is there? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I think Arnold raised the point last, when we talked about this, that maybe Easterlings without him aren't super strong. But I think... What I think the Dragon Emperor like actually hid how powerful maybe the other heroes were because like Ritabi and Brogear are not weak heroes at no. all. Um, I mean at the Cardiff tournament, um uh the guy, one of the guys I lost to who had those two heroes came seconds out of 120 people. Yeah. Um he I think he drew one game. He might have drawn one game or he won yeah. them all, I can't remember. One of those. So and he just had those two. Um, mm. A few uh, dragon dudes Not, and are they dragon knights or something? Dragon knights, yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, mostly normal warriors, and then um, a couple of the weird muscly dudes, and that was okay. it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so he he did really well with just those two heroes. So yeah, yeah. strong, very strong. Okay, this I think is the more relevant area of discussion because I, th I think other people will have made these comparisons before. Like I think Imra Hill's a really straightforward comparison. Golden King, broadly the same role and Boromir the same thing. I think it's easy to make those comparisons. Um, the circle thing is just meant to be illustrative. It's not meant to be like <laughs> any kind of strategic advice. Like, please don't form your Easterlings into a big circle and mark march up the board. <laughs> or That's do. Not... <laughs> you know, who cares? Um, so what are the main issues with Dragon Emperor and what are some possible ways they could be solved? Um, so first problem, in my opinion, is how versatile he is and how survivable he is. Um, what I mean by this uh, and why it's problematic is that uh, he effectively gets six free wounds from the Black Dragons. Um, 
Now I know I've I've inverted those commas deliberately because it's not quite how it works. Um, but it does give you sort of a lot more defense than most heroes would have, um, both in uh, well mainly against shooting, um, because the way the the in the ways work is you have to get a five up to hit the dragon emperor. It's not a four up. So it does mean if you've got a lot of ranged fire, um, you're much more likely to have to kill the Black Dragons first before you hit the Dragon Emperor. Mm -hmm. Even if you do hit the Dragon Emperor, he's D7. So um, basic, <laughs> sh basic shooting is on a 6x4. Um, and even like upgraded shooting, elves or crossbows is 6s. Yeah. Um, he's 3 wounds, 3 fate. Um, and he's resistant to magic. Um, and the points I highlighted earlier... Because of his base and banner size, he can sit further back, so he's at much um, reduced risk of being wounded in combat if that was something that yeah your opponent wanted to do. Even if you get to him, he's got strike, he's got an elven spear. So it's like, yeah, I think it's very hard to actually just completely beat him in combat. And if you lose, the black basically the number of black dragons that are left on the palanquin get to attack so up to six additional attacks at strength three yeah, yeah. i mean it's he's just so good in like every aspect yes. i mean the only thing he doesn't do is cast magic but yeah <laughs> there we go um so, I mean, how can it be solved? Um, there's a couple of options that I've put here. Um, I think I tried to stay away from, like, really, really powerful nerfs. Um, mm. Because I think, firstly, I don't think GW are likely to come in and just completely, like, nerf him into the ground. No, like they need to sell more. They need to sell more. Um, and like I, I, again, I think it's not a problem the model existing in a, in a sense, but it it just needs to be changed a bit and toned down to the point where, you know, you're going to be. He's not that auto take that you were mentioning earlier. So um, yeah, a couple of things. So the black dragons on the palanquin come with a shield. Um, one way to get around it, I thought, is just to I mean they don't come with a shield. So you reduce the defense of the palanquin to five. Um, it's little things like that means strength three attacks and strength three bows wound on fives rather than sixes, which might be quite nice. Um, another way to do it is just to make it so the in the way on the four plus hits the emperor rather than a five plus, so you're more likely to just kill the emperor rather than having to go through the black dragons first. Um, next thing is it's uh, the palanquin has a condition uh, on it which affects its movement. Um, basically, on three wounds or above, it moves normally. Um, what I would suggest is make that four wounds and above. So if you kill three of them rather than having to kill four of them, you maybe reduce that movement condition. Again, just a little thing. It's, it sounds quite inconsequential, but I think it might be enough to tone it down a bit. And then the real nuclear option, which I don't think is necessarily a good idea, but is a thing, is if you just reduce the range of the banner to six inches. So then the fight bubble and the banner were just both six inches. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a bad option. Um, I think. I mean, is it even doing that much? Like, as in, like reducing the range? I know we've just gone through all the circle stuff, but it, because six is still like pretty big overall, like, you've got a twelve-inch line. I don't know. I mean, what it would mean would you'd have to move him further forward, um, mm. because I think. You have two options. You either make him easier to kill or you have to make it so that he'd need to move into a more risky position. I think the problem at the moment is he is difficult to kill and also difficult to get to. Um, because realistically, you could have him, I reckon, six or seven inches at least behind your main line and still get a really strong buffing effect off on your dudes um, with that banner. So reducing that banner to six inches would mean you'd have to push him up to maybe like just tucked in directly behind. And that might make it easier for, you know, a heroic combat to nip through and actually be able to attack the Emperor, perhaps. Yeah. Um, because that's that's my assumption of the, the maybe the best way to go about killing him is just throw in a big hero or two and hope that you can just win that combat and then do some damage. Um, yeah. 
I mean, I feel like <sighs> is he so valuable that you just like don't attack with him? But also, you could get like a good surface area if you're facing against the Dragon Emperor onto the base. So like, yeah. you can get more guys in than most yeah, heroes. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's going to be harder to protect the Dragon Emperor's base. Yeah, oh, um, but I, I think I think what you're saying there is, is entirely correct. It's just that initial getting to him that I think would be the problem. So what I'm what I'm trying to do with especially the last two is just make it so it's more likely he'll be closer to the front. Um, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's I just think it would be suggesting all all of these changes would be made no. at once. No, I'm suggest I'm like. I basically for each of them I've got like a two or three or four in this okay. case suggestions for stuff you could do. I think I would implement like one or two of them. Um I mean if we go to the next slide, which is value for points, um like we we've we've listed earlier, like we compared him to other profiles and he just offers very good value compared to every other hero. Um I think also one thing that I hadn't realised, I had a go at building a couple of lists for these, um, but I, I mean, I never played these things. Got no real idea, but um, I, I have made some lists at the yeah. end. But um... yeah, yeah, I think one of the things that one of the things that a model being cheaper does is it lets you have more options in the rest of your army. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that's just taking more dudes, or for instance, thirty points is the difference between a basic captain and Brogear. Like, so suddenly, if you raise him by 30 points, that means maybe you're having to drop one of the fairly powerful heroes in Brogear for maybe just a normal captain, for instance. Like, those little changes will add up, especially at lower points values. So it might just be that, um, I mean, my suggestion is increase points to 190 or 200. I think going beyond 200 might feel a bit bad, but I think you could also definitely justify it. Like... I mean, some people, I've watched videos on him where some people have valued him at like 220, 230, and like, I don't think those are entirely wide of the mark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, 170 is is absurd. Um, and there, I don't know, I had a couple of other ideas, like you could just drop strike or defense, which I think are his two best heroics at the moment. Um, that might be quite nice. I think um, yeah, dropping defense would be good because it means you're much more likely to, to kill him. But also, I mean, yeah. because he's D7, defense mm. also, in most scenarios, won't make too much difference. Yeah, um, it's true. It's true. So um, I think two, 200 points. I mean, even Bjorn is like 200 points. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think 200 is a good call. Um, yeah. I but I don't know, I'm, a, I'm a little too much, maybe, for him. Yeah. I'm a little reluctant to just do a points increase because, like, I mean, maybe maybe that's the easiest way to do it. Maybe it that will be what makes people happy. But I don't know, like a little change. Like I really liked my last change actually. Like make the black dragons count towards warband space. Like I just I think that would be quite nice. Though making it so yeah. they can take fewer dudes. Um, and I think I was I was looking for like l- maybe like two or three subtle changes rather than just you know up three hundred points for instance. It's not up. Sorry, up like thirty or forty points or something like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I, d- I definitely think if he'd if he'd been brought out at two hundred points, nobody would have batted an eyelid. They'd been like, "Yeah, he's pretty powerful," but you know, that's about right for this kind of hero. Um, but I don't know. Given how finely balanced the game is, the fact that people, I think, virtually every video I've watched on the Dragon Emperor has said, "Okay, he's way too powerful at one seventy. He should be much higher up." Does speak that maybe some kind of change needs to be made. Yeah, I think I think so as well. I, I like the six Black Dragons counting towards Warband space because um, it also means you can't just have because because of the free upgrade, you can't just give it to everyone. Yeah, um, and also it would make him maybe a bit harder to protect in like Maelstrom deployment or something, um, or if he had to deploy in like the center line of the board, if you had fewer dudes protecting him, it might be you'd be able to Get kill them before the rest of the army arrived. Um, yeah. Final point. Uh, yeah, so on the next slide, uh, just talking about um, the rest of the list, I guess, because I think, um, you know, it's quite easy to point a lot of the blame at the Dragon Emperor, um, mm-hmm. rightly or wrongly. Um, rightly, but, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, 
I think it's also good to, you know, give some context and look at the rest of the army. And I, my real bugbear is fucking Ratabi because yeah. Jesus, he's someone is strong. <laughs> he's so fucking good. He's twenty. I, I, I she, reckon we, she, we, she, she. Sorry, sorry. She yeah. is twenty points more than Lurtz, <laughs> and I would easily take her over Lurtz if she was yeah. in Isengard. Yeah. Uh, it would be an auto include, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like you look down at, at the profile, you're like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, you know, it's it's it. I, I appreciate you lose a, my, a point of will and a point of fate. Like I know it's not your classic three three three, but it, it's that kind of stat line. Um, and I think. Even without her rules at the bottom, which I think are pretty bonkers, yeah. she's probably worth around 100 points, I think would be completely fair to say. Um, she even gets strike, like... Well, she, she's 110 points here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I, I'm saying she's worth around 100 points. But then you start to put in the special rules. So without the special rules, I think she's probably worth around 100. Yeah, but then okay. you put in Master of Battle... Three plus. Three plus. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Even Dane has a four plus. It's actually nuts. Three plus. Three plus. Who even is this person? Like, are they even actually in the Lord of the Rings universe? I don't know. We need on, on, on. Have, have, have GW just made them up? Uh, it feels like it, doesn't it? Um, it does feel like it. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean that master battle then. I reckon, and was, I reckon Jay made the Dragon Emperor uh, and gave the Dragon Emperor master battle three plus, and then to someone told him that that was too much, and so he wanted to keep it anyway, but he just put it on this other hero so he could take it anyway. I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, unyielding combat stats is great. I think it means you can't be trapped essentially. Um, and then you know phalanx is great as well. It means you. Means you can't be trapped. You can you can move out of the way. Um, so two models moving rather than one, and then she even gets to re-roll wounds against trapped models. Yeah, like I, I... <sighs> that. That's where, like, you can engineer trapping, like basically yeah. anyone you want to. Um, yeah. If you, especially as you've got um bro gear. Yeah. Um, you can manipulate the board a little bit. Um, and yeah, that's just so strong. Um, and I don't know. So I've put in a couple of changes for Ritabi. Um, I think you either have to put her up at least ten points to one twenty, or move that Master of Battle to be a five plus. I think those are the two yeah. like quite obvious. I think either of those would make this absolutely fine. Yeah, but a th a three plus is too consistent. Um, and it's literally twice as likely, um, to happen. Um, and yeah, that's a problem. Um. Other changes, I don't know. Um, I think the the Legion has a really specific problem in that because you can do um, upgrades in the Dragon Emperor's Warband or any like drag any um, Dragon Knights or Black Dragon Knights. I can't remember what they're called. Um, they can do upgrades as well, um, and I think that again makes the problem um, sort of more widespread because it means you can just spam the the Dragon Knights. And then get those fight five models in there as well. Well, sorry, fight four fight six. But, well, sorry, <laughs> fight well, fight four base. They fight four base, and then they would move up to fight six if the uh, sorry fight five if the dragon ember was buffing them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, so my I think my chains are a little bit weak. Um, but you could make it so that Amda can't be taken in the same um. Uh, list as the Dragon Emperor. I'm not sure people will take both. Though. Yeah, I know. That's the. That's. I thought it was quite niche, I but like, think I think you just no one's going to take Amda now. Like, yeah, I, I just don't see a reason to over the Dragon Emperor. Yeah, um, I'm I, sad. I think that's one of the things that's a bit sucky. Like, literally, yeah. that all the new heroes are so much better. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just selfishness on the part of GW that they're like, actually, let's just make some really good stuff and sell some Eastling models, um, yeah. or if. They legitimately thought that this was balanced. I I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because like, Amda is one of my favorite profiles in the game. I think mm. like because there's so much going on, but none of it is OP. It's all exactly where it should be. Like, because 
he's got his upsides, like he's a banner, and if he kills the leader, he goes up to a six inch banner, which like um encourages you to play in quite an aggressive way. But he's only D six, he's only got um one fate. So like yes you can get me out but you want to be out there like trying to chop people up. But there's also the risk that it goes wrong, and there isn't that risk for the Dragon Emperor, because he can just sit at the back and be a banner that's four times the area of Amda's banner without the leader kill. Like, yeah. anyway. I think Amda's, like, because the Dragon Emperor's rules, pretty much every single one of the rules is not situational. Like, they're all yeah. really solid general rules. Um, that buff these things around him, whereas Anders, like, yeah, he, he's a three inch banner, like you said, and then if he kills the enemy leader, he becomes a six inch banner. Like, that's probably, I mean, your leader killing the enemy leader just is so unlikely. Yeah. Um, and you can try and do it, but if they don't want you to do it, if you're playing someone competent, you can probably prevent, you know, yeah. if you're somehow getting through to killing their leader, then you're probably winning the game anyway. Yeah. But it's just like that sort of. It's good, but fluffy, but might not come up that often. Um, yeah. And again, you know, you get to strike when your enemy strikes. Um, mm. That's nice and fluffy. I, I love that. I love that rule. Avoid doing it. Like yeah. your opponent can just yeah. mitigate it. Whereas the dragon emperor, it's like, well, how am I meant to stop him from you know buffing his dudes and being a twelve inch banner? I, I can't. Mm. He just is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that what what you're pretty succinctly like saying there is is exactly my point like i think specifically retard being the dragon emperor are problematic i don't have such an issue with broger i think he i think he's okay um, i think he's strong but i don't think yeah. he's as broken yeah he doesn't he's not in the uh, it is a he isn't it yeah man yeah yeah, um, yeah so yeah gets uh natural sixes gets wheel back yeah. um Tremor is really good but it needs a five plus five up. um yeah it got used against me a couple times um, and he uh, he did tell me um, in one of his last games he was playing against um, uh, what's his face um, Elf King what's his name Thrandor no the other one the High Elf uh, uh, Gilgalad Gilgalad yes he was playing against Gilgalad and it was Lords of Battle nice uh, no no Contest of Champions so he right. needed to to obviously mitigate Gilgalad yeah and he just tremored him to death. Nice. Um, it just, <laughs> yeah, that'll uh, do. <laughs> and that worked. So, yeah, uh, Fury is obviously really good. Enchanted Blaze is good. Blade Wrath is good. Yeah. Um, so you really can't get wrong with them. Um, and mm. eight for eighty points. That's so good. Yep. Does yep. anyone take the War Drakes? I don't know. I, I mean, I I don't think I think they're fine. Um, I just again I wonder if if the list doesn't really require them. Um, no, I mean they've got. Like basically the same stat line as the Dragon Cult Acolyte, but two wounds mm. pretty much. Yeah. Um, and one more strength, which is nice. Yeah. And the Venom. Mm. But I mean, if they're Cav base, which I assume they are. Yeah. Um. Anyway, sorry. Uh, sidetracking there. Um. Nice. Yeah. Works. So. Uh, have we covered everything on that slide? Pretty much. I mean. The only one left is is the make it only in Dragon Emperor's Warband, which I think makes sense. But I don't know. It, it, it's 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 just in in what way do you want to tone him down? Like, do you want to tone the army down? Do you want to just make him more expensive, or do you want to like tone down the effect that he has on the army? I think those are the options. Um, yeah, and like I think you could do a mixture of any of them. Like I wouldn't be surprised if like with the because when they did the Iron Hills Ballista, they did a points increase and something else, didn't they? It wasn't just a uh, points increase, or was it? Was it only a points increase they I did? I think it might have just been a points increase. Okay, wow. Um, yeah, so it went from ninety to one twenty. I think twenty. <laughs> so proportionally, yeah. a third more expensive. Yeah. And and you could do that again here. Like I wouldn't put him up forty or fifty. I think maybe it's a bit much, but I think yeah. What what would you do if you were balancing it? What would you do based uh, based on the kind of suggestions you've made? What would you pick? Um, I don't know. I think I I the weird thing is I kind of like that the twelve inch banner exists. I kind of like that it is this 
huge like focal point of the army and from that respect in that respect i can understand the 12 inch banner so maybe you leave that in um but with that you do need to understand that the power a 12 inch banner has on a shield wall which is effectively the way i i imagine you'd run eastlings with this list um mm. i would oh maybe it's just a points increase maybe that's easy i really like my black dragons change so i'd put that in make the black dragons count towards warband space i think that would be quite yeah. nice um I think it's a fairly safe bet to put him up to 190, maybe like 190 and a couple of other nerfs. Maybe take away defense from the heroics just to make him a bit easier to kill. Um, yeah. I, along I with that, all the things you said so far. Yeah. Along with that, I'd put Ritabi's Master of Battle up to a five up. I think that would be yeah. better. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I Maybe you do those and you see it, what effects it has. Because, I mean, he's still really powerful, but. I think it would it would almost just because I think the reason I got annoyed about this and what what triggered me <laughs> when we were talking about this the other day was that there was no acknowledgement in the FAQ of how powerful he is. No. Um and like there needs there needs to be something that acknowledges and like tries to rein in how powerful it is because you I my guess would be you're going to start to see a lot of Easterlings on top tables. Um, and I don't really know what you do to counter him short of bringing siege weapons, maybe. Maybe that's the yeah, new matter. Maybe. maybe that's what you do. Because it's not even like magic does that much or ranged does that much because you have protection against both of those. Um, I think so, I, yeah. I like all your suggestions. I would also... Uh, doesn't he have... Can't he shield as well? Yes, with the I spear. I would take that shield. That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> how is he shielding? He doesn't have a shield for start. And how is he shielding when he's on the palan? Whatever it's called. I don't think he can shield on the palanquin. Let me check. Okay. Defense to the north. I think he, uh, he he definitely can't support while he's on the palanquin. I can't remember. Um, may use the shielding special rule though they do not have a shield. Oh no, he can. He could shield while on the on he the. He can shield palanquin. on it. So get yeah. rid of that. That's dumb. Yeah. Yeah, and it can faint for some reason. Okay. Yeah, he definitely shouldn't be able to do that. It should yeah. just be the six guys fighting, I would have thought. Yeah. Like, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't mind the board wide stand fast. I don't mind the banner. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the resistance to magic, but I could also see that um, you need some kind of defense against magic beyond just three will. So, yeah, I, I, can, I can understand that. But, yeah. Just tone it. Just tone it down. Maybe make him fight five. Maybe make him fight five. Is that good? No. Maybe that's not good. Mm, what is he? Fight six. Yeah. I think fight maybe. six is okay. I think maybe yeah. Ritabi should be fight five. To be honest. Yeah. Um. But I think that's fine. Yeah, maybe um, fight six is okay. Yeah. Um, should we have a quick look? Uh, we'll just put it's the lists. army lists on the screen just for the sake of it. Um. So I've done a four fifty, yeah. seven fifty, and a thousand. Um, I know yeah. I've put more dra black dragons in this than I think people would. They people would probably instead of putting so many black dragons in, they probably put um, just some normal Eastlings because they're just the same points. But as I yeah. think this is the Legion, I think you can take for um, free them for free. Um, yeah. So uh, four fifty twenty four models with the Dragon Emperor. Um, I've taken yeah. a captain instead of um, Ritabi and Brogear because. Um, I think marching is going to be useful, and I just want to keep the model count up. Um, then you've got uh, forty-one points, uh, forty-one models at seven fifty, which is pretty good with the three big heroes. Yeah. So, and, and mostly full war bands, so it's quite like yeah. a nice points level to have those. Um, you can mix um, in some of the models or some cheaper models. Just to preempt people's salt in the comments about these lists, um, we I. We're now aware that you cannot take uh, the black dragons in war bands that aren't led by the dragon emperor or a dragon knight. So you wouldn't be able to take them in the Eastling captains, Ritabis, or Brogears war bands. The which but, one? Sorry. So you wouldn't be able to take the black dragons in the Eastling captains, uh, Ritabis, or Brogears. Oh, okay. So I've completely you, I, unless, un, Well, I mean you. You either make them normal warriors, or if you've paid for the upgrade, you can have them in there. But yeah, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be okay. free. That that makes my last list. 
uh, even worse then because um, <laughs> you'd need to take you'd need to take another uh, because of the points you'd save you'd need to take another thing unless yeah unless I can't remember what version of LK's thing I've got on here but um, unless it's been included for you maybe maybe, it has. maybe. Mm. I think it's because it, I don't think it's free but I think you can take them is that right. Yeah, you, you would be able to, but um, I think I had you to don't pay need to pay for them. point. Yeah, maybe yeah, you I, do. Think, I think I had to pay for them on the spreadsheet I okay. used. So yeah, I think maybe these that works. Then. That works. Um, so yeah, at a thousand points, you've got basically max war bands with everyone you could possibly need, and I've put a captain yeah. on a horse in there for the march. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like sixty models at a thousand points. I mean, mm. really, isn't that bad? You're yeah. You're probably even going like even against my goblin town, like. Yeah. I'd probably have 150 models odds. Like yeah. having 60 Eastlings with the Dragon yeah. Emperor and these bonkers heroes is so yeah. good. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it's just really good. Um, and yeah. I, at this sort of points level, I don't think just a points increase on the Dragon Emperor would be enough. I think some See, of the other changes we suggested would be necessary. Because that, that's why I'm wary of just doing a points increase, because. I don't think I, I appreciate like the banner scales well with points as well, but like um, a forty point increase at uh, at three hundred fifty points is massively different to one at thousand points, and maybe that's part of the balance. Maybe that maybe that's how it works. But like, I'd almost prefer a change that like translates well at all points levels, um, yeah. which like taking away strike would do, for instance, or yeah. Yeah. Or the warbands the warband space thing as well, that'd be really nice because that I mean that would really change this list. Like you'd have to like rejig the heroes and stuff like that. Like you couldn't just max out the Dragon Emperor's Warband. Yeah, true. So yeah. Mm. Um so uh, if you've got any suggestions as yeah. to how to unbreak the Dragon Emperor, um yeah. put them down below. If we've made mistakes, which I'm sure we have, which we will to inform us, which we'll yeah. make ignore yeah and like well i'm also not being sarcastic like i i'm genuinely really interested to hear like people's ideas on this one because it's fairly clear that i think there is a desire in the community for a fix to be done and it is just i think it's a really interesting like conversation to have is like why why have people of of all of all the topics in in sbg why have people agreed on this one thing that you know the dragon emperor needs a nerf like what what is it about yeah. him that people but people don't like? Um, it seems to be that, and maybe they're just jealous that they can't have him in their army. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I mean, I'd take him if I could have him in Goblin Town for sure. Yeah. Um, in fact, yeah, I'd probably take him over the Goblin King in Goblin Town. Yeah, uh, but oh, in your in your army, a twelve inch banner. Yeah, that I mean, it it probably wouldn't even cover everyone. No, obviously it wouldn't. Like even at like four hundred, even at four hundred points. But like, yeah, it's it's. So um, yeah, the other one is um, assault on Lothlorien, but I don't think that's quite as bad. Weirdly, no, no. Um, I don't know why. A lot of people seem very upset by it, but um, is it I... just because it it nerfs shooting so hard and that feels really bad? I know I don't see that many lists relying like heavily on shooting, and even when I played it with um, Assault and Helm's Deep, I still beat it. Like, yeah. But, um, so what? What? What is it that makes people salty about it? Because it, it looks relatively innocuous. No, I, I think I it's I... the plus one wound and the maneuverability and the kind of toolbox yeah. of being able to make the bats or the warg or the spider like insane for a turn and just have them yeah. snipe stuff and yeah. they're very maneuverable. Um, yeah. Obviously, they're a bit better at shooting than vanilla goblins, but God, vanilla goblins. Shit. They're shit. I mean, because um, like, that can't be your only strat here is to try and outshoot your opponent, because also you can't take 100% bows. So you could. No. If you're taking a third goblin or orc bows, I appreciate you can have trackers and stuff like that. I know there's some decent shooting options, but like. Yeah, that doesn't. doesn't yeah, it doesn't feel like a thing. Um, no. or, well, also because the fucking models are out of production. I think maybe if there was a thing where every turn you roll a dice and it gets more and more likely that it will become daylight, and that way, mm. I don't know, maybe people just sit back and end their turn. If yeah. That's the but anyway, that's yeah. a different discussion. So, um, 
Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. This uh, may be a whole episode. It may be half an episode. Um, but uh, I guess you'll find out. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, it's yeah. a goodbye from myself and goodbye from OT. Bye, everybody. Peace. And the news section at the end of the podcast uh, in the normal place after the standard Dragon Emperor chat followed by Battle Report. Um, I think we're cutting the Bat Rep, aren't we? I think we're cutting the Bat Rep. I don't think the Bat Rep made it. Well, (laughs) the viewers will know at this point whether there was a Battle Report. There wasn't. There wasn't. There wasn't. Uh, so new, it was a um, shit battle anyway. You, you you wouldn't have enjoyed it. It wasn't a good battle. It was really good. No, I know. I know. I, I was just I was just trying to make them feel better for not seeing it. So the the two winning lists from uh, a big GW tournament were revealed. Um, so it, it was a good versus evil. Uh, so they had two armies, and it was uh, Shire and ruffians. <laughs> yeah. So so close. Um, <laughs> So OP, Plisner. It was Bjornings and uh, Black Riders. I'm <laughs> stunned. <laughs> yeah, Bjornings low more counts. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, one of them's just eight Black Riders, and the other one's uh, Bjorn Grimbjorn, uh, eleven Bjornings, and then four Bjornings with bow. Yeah. Yeah. So... I feel like the Bjornings because of all of the uh, Dragon Emperor chat. Which you, you two have bought into. Um, the Bjornings have now flown under the radar of being probably the more competitive choice. Whoa, I'm not sure about that. I feel like all they're less balanced. Like, you have to be really good to use. All I'm going to say is um, a Bjornings army is the power gamer's choice. And, uh, and there, what, what army are you doing next again? Remind me. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm doing Iron Hills. Okay, so there's there's definitely not any Bjornings heading your way, is there? Uh, no, definitely no Bjornings in the yeah, post. Coming, coming the from, from over, overseas, yeah. <laughs> possibly. Unconfirmed. <laughs> definitely yeah, unconfirmed. Not. They're coming overseas from America, where Mayor has ordered them from Games Workshop officially. Yeah, he, obviously. He, he wanted to pay more money. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah they I've lost got, the receipts, so, hobby, so yeah. they, there won't be any evidence. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean... Can I just say, Beyond the Bear, what a shit model. So shit. Yeah, so and really as viewers really... will know, um, if they go and watch our uh, top five yeah. best and worst models episode, uh, we, yeah. we slated this. Yeah. Rigorous or or did so we? Well, we need to re- uh, remain an air of mystery for that episode. <laughs> you know what we could do? We could what, uh, paint now? it up like a badger and use it in burrows and badgers. <laughs> Just a really big fucking fat badger. Yeah, it's about the right size. Yeah, I was about to say, badgers are already pretty chunky. I mean, it is way too big, but... I think I think that's bigger than a badger in those badgers. Yes, I think it is as well. On a sick bill base, it's big. Anyway, um, what else has happened? I'm looking forward on... Uh, this is now me tangenting off to burrows and badgers, which is what I would really be talking about. Um, I'm looking forward to the bear model is coming for those matches. Mm, I've seen the there's just like a the foot peaks. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how expensive it will be. I imagine it will be 50 quid. 50, 50 quid. 30 pounds region. Yeah. I'd put it for 40 ish at least. Some of the I mean the little badger comparatively little is like 12 and a half quid. Yeah, I know, but like it's not going to be that much bigger cuz I feel like he it's actually huge. Charged... He actually charges based on like how much material is used, unlike Games Workshop, where it's just an arbitrary. We're going to make so they roll it. So they roll a d six. It's so much more material. It's like what if it's exponentially hollow? big. Well, maybe. Well, maybe if it's hollow, I don't know. We'll find out. I, I, I'm not going to commit to buying it because it might be astronomically expensive, but it does look really cool. And you're only buying Arnor until April, till June, what? actually. Wow, Jesus! The first—I was going to say—the first of April is going to be a good day for um, GW, but apparently the problem—the problem is—is is if I didn't have that rule, I'd just keep buying more bows yes. and bubbles. Yeah, well, you, you you're churning them out at a hell of a rate. I know, but the tr- trouble is with painting them up quick is also it means that you then want to just buy more to have more to paint, and it's like I can't afford to buy more. 
Like, true. I, I really want them, but I don't need them. <laughs> but I mean, you, we, none of us need them. Like that. That's a this is true. Slightly flawed argument. Like but until I, I, until I we go them. go professional, full time yeah. YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, when we get the Patreon up, I need them even <laughs> less than than other shit I don't need. Yeah. Um, should, should we talk like talking food of and water. Water. speaking of other shit we don't need uh, Warner Bros have signed a deal to make <laughs> or Lord of the Rings films I, I have full confidence yes do you think um, P. Jackson will come back I mean, I, I think the str- I, to this point? I, th- I think the stress might yeah. kill him. Like looking at him on the Hobbit, I was like, I'm not sure this is a man that's got three more yeah, but the films in him. Well, the Hobbit, to be fair, was him being thrown in something that he hadn't done any pre-production work on, and then had to yeah. make because he went along. It's a I slightly think he... different situation to Lord of the Rings, where he spent three years planning it and then three I, years filming it. He is he is what twenty years older now than when he made Lotra. Like, I imagine he... I, I think he could definitely do it, and I think he could still do a decent job, but I think he might yeah. need a bit more help than he had originally. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like he'll be more of, like, a producer role. Yeah. And, and that would be that would be nice. I could see that. Like, yeah. him a lot making of, sure the theme's right. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that he's been, like, working on recently has been really good. Like, the Beatles documentary and the uh, World War One documentary were really good. Mm. So... Okay. All right, good but yeah, I, I think I think it'll be better than fucking um, the Rings of Power shit. Like it can't be worse. And like as long as it's as good, if not better, than the Hobbit, I think it it will be as good, won't it? Even if it's like generic blockbuster crap, it would be as good yeah. as the Hobbit. Yeah, because it wouldn't have to be actively stupid, which is the benchmark the Hobbit set. What do you think, though, that they actually do? Like, what will the films be on? Aragorn's policy on taxation. Mm. Is this going to be where we like want it to be the Obi Wan show, where we just <laughs> want it to be him sitting in a desert? <laughs> but we know it definitely won't be that. It's just you and, Mac- you and McGregor as Aragorn in the desert. <laughs> it's just old <laughs> Game of Tenson sitting in. It's, it's Game of Thrones, but it's him just fucking coming up with boring policies of Gondor. <laughs> He draws up the legislation to mean that the Shire can't, uh, doesn't allow men in anymore, and that's just the yeah. entire film. Yeah, it's him writing the document for three hours. Yeah, um, taking loo breaks. <laughs> I, I don't actually know what they could do. Um, what would be interesting? I'd like to see um, some of maybe like following like Gimli, maybe, and what he did with like. Because it's the glittering caverns he goes to, isn't it? And sets yeah, up but new... he doesn't really have it's an adventure. Gotta, there. It's got to have like an. It needs to be an adventure, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's got to be but... classic. Oh, War of the North. It needs a Hobbit, and it needs them going on a journey, and probably a ring. That's what it needs? Maybe yeah, they'll do. Right. Maybe they'll do Smeagol. Smeagol story. Uh, but but does not Isn't it? Isn't the idea is that it sequel? that it's a isn't the idea that it's a sequel to to Lotra? They're is not it, doing and then it, a sequel to Lotra. Okay. If they do a sequel to Lotra, I'm actually not watching it because fuck that. So so like you think it should happen within the same timeline as Lotra? Yeah, of course. More in the north. Mm. What well, just just like the Eastlings sieging <laughs> the Dragon Emperor on that, yeah, on that stupid base. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know if what? I'm not interested in seeing a big CGI battle outside a big CGI mountain again, to be honest. It was pretty good last time, though. Don't you remember the, the goats and the twirly whirlies and how everything twirly was really whirlies. grey? Everything was really grey. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I was trying to feel like this is a little bit here. I was oh, I was sat in the room I was sat in the room with Odd Odd when, when the fucking the troll brutes with the catapults on their back came up and like I could see the years just falling off it. I was like he's gonna die in front of me. Like I don't know CPR. Like if he has a heart attack now, I can't save him. I I think it'll be something like Aragorn and Gandalf um looking for Gollum. Solving crime in Gondor. Yeah, it'll, 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 be, it'll be something like that. Or it'll be like Gandalf's journeys before the Lord of the Rings, or Aragorn's journeys before Lord of the Rings, or 
like this new anime in rings of power no because that's second age but as in it's gonna end with uh yeah maybe, maybe there's enough of a time period there yeah I mean, they're, they're thousands of years apart so it's fine yeah but we don't know how far rock are gonna push it like they're gonna go up to where the lord of the rings started in terms of the last alliance yeah okay Hopefully. Because they've only got licensing to do so. They could do the uh, Angmar stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angmar and Arnor would be really cool. I'd actually love to see that. That would be cool. Like, cool. You can get hobbits in mm. that way as well. Yeah. Shoot and them, yeah. your army would become OP for the um, resultant release oh. from GW. That's true, actually. What a yeah. win that would be. And I'd immediately not want to play them anymore because I... <laughs> Also, you, 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 you've, got, you've got 3D printed models, so you won't yeah, be able to go to any tournaments. Well, I, I can go to non GW ones that allow it. Perfect. Well, that really was news. Again, definitely a hobby section and a new section have technically been present. Yeah. You can't deny it. Yeah. Sue us. You You'll lose. Yeah. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Please, please. Yeah. Help. Um, we're on 82 subs now. Yeah, and we as this is as we're recording this, I think we got past 3,000 views in total. Yeah, wow. Um, so live, live uh, reactions to going past 3,000 views. It's about 2,999 more than I thought we'd get. Nice. That means uh, you thought that only one of us would watch. Well, yeah, I mean, I because to be honest, I was pretty afraid of like listening to the sound of my own voice. Like, yeah. I talk a lot of I talk a lot of crap, and I don't want to hear it back. I mean, that's the main reason I don't listen to it, hearing your voice again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, rude. So rude. <laughs> oh, man, like, right, let's wrap this up. I'm, I'm, I'm this up. <laughs> the listeners are already tuned out. They're not even here now. Um, I next mean, week, it's, it's uh, baseball just makes it. Anyway. What week, the fuck's happening next week? <laughs> for the three of us that are listening, we'll be talking about the tournament that we attended. Um, so we'll be doing a little tournament review uh, to round things off. Um, so it's uh, goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Onod. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, Who's he going to say first? Onod says goodbye. I, I just goodbye from. <laughs> OT. Bye. There it is, Bye. that fucking annoying gap, the prick. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs>